What's up you guys? Last year alone, my investments went from 150,000 to over 400,000. And it's just mind blowing how fast it actually grew. Because with my investments, I'm not super stressed out. I'm not researching new companies every day and I'm not shuffling money from one place to another in order to gain that extra 2%. Most of my investments are pretty passive and I kind of just set on a schedule and set and forget and every time I get paid, I just put a little bit into these investments that I've already researched and whether the market's up or down, it doesn't really matter. I remember the first 10,000 or so took a while to actually accumulate, but since then it's been growing like a wildfire and all I'm doing is all the things that I teach you guys on this channel. So make sure to check out all my other videos on how to set yourself up to be able to do this. But for now, here's the breakdown of my entire investment portfolio. So from a high level, my investments are broken out into five categories. First is real estate with 52.2%. Next is my retirement accounts at 17.8%. Next is cryptocurrency at 15.6%. Number four is going to be my brokerage account, which has a lot of stock. And then lastly is cash at about 4.4%. So let's start with real estate because that's the biggest. So within the real estate category, I have two separate sections. So first is the amount of equity in my primary residence. The reason why I'm going equity and not just the total value of the home is because if I were to sell that home, I'd have to pay the majority of it back. Whereas the equity portion is how much I would actually make if I were to sell it. And so I'd have that amount of money to be able to do with what I'd like. The second category within this real estate portion is our savings for a rental property. As you guys probably know, the market right now is absolutely insane. And so my wife and I have been actively looking for a rental property and have even put in bids and offers. One of them, we even went $100,000 over the asking price with very little contingency and we still got outbid. So we're just waiting until the market cools off just a little bit, but that savings is still there and it's allocated only for a rental property. So we're hoping to get that in the next six months. The next biggest portion on my investment portfolio is my retirement amount. So of my entire retirement investment, 50% is in my 401k slash 403b. The next 40% is in a Roth IRA. And then the last 10% is in a traditional IRA. Now within my retirement accounts in general, I'm only invested in index funds or ETF for reasons that you guys probably already know if you've subscribed to this channel. But if not, check out my videos on why I'm invested specifically in index funds that are more safe with low fees. So all of my retirement accounts are made up of three different index funds slash ETFs. The first one is no surprise, it's VU, which is the S&P 500, and that makes up 70% of my entire retirement savings. 20% is made up of QQQ, which is a high growth ETF, which has a high percentage of companies in the high technology or AR or VR industries. And so the way the world's going right now, I just think that those companies are gonna blow up. So it's a good idea for me to have a little more exposure there. Lastly, I have 10% of my retirement portfolio in an international index fund slash ETF called VXUS. This is full of a bunch of companies that are in emerging markets or just in companies that are outside of the United States. This is a very small percentage of my retirement portfolio, but I do want exposure to companies that are outside the United States because they are pushing hard to try to take some of that market share outside the rest of the world. All right, next is cryptocurrency. And looking at my entire investment portfolio, this is actually a much bigger amount of my investment portfolio than I ever planned to have in the cryptocurrency space. But it's just grown to so much that this is just where it's at. The funny thing is that at this time of recording, cryptocurrency in general is down about 50% from all time highs. So at one point, this was more like 30% of my entire investment portfolio. And that's kind of the excitement of cryptocurrency right now. It can boom at any moment. But right now we're witnessing the opposite of that, which is a fall. But I got into cryptocurrency in around 2017 or 2018, so I'm still up overall. So as far as what's in my cryptocurrency investments, my top two positions are what I suggest any of you guys start with, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum. For Bitcoin, I have 28.6% and for Ethereum, it's 27.9%. I think both of these have such a lead over everything else that if you're gonna dabble at all in cryptocurrency, these are the ones that I would stick with. And then I would just watch the market 
especially right now during all this volatility, I think it might go down even further. So that might be a good entry point for you once you've done your research, to figure out what projects you wanna jump on board with. The next crypto that I'm super big on is Cardano or ADA, and that makes up 19% of my portfolio. Now, like I said, a couple months ago when everything was at all time highs, my Cardano amount was actually the number one piece in my portfolio but it's been hammered down pretty hard in the last couple months, and that's okay, I still believe in it. It's still top three for me, for sure. Of my total crypto investment, 70% is in these three alone. That's how much I value these. But I do have faith in a couple other ones that I've put a little bit of money into, and here they are. Next is Polkadot at 5.4% and Chainlink at 5.4%. Then comes Cosmos, or Atom, at 4.1%, and then Polygon Matic at 3.4%. All of those last four that I just listed have incredible use cases and I think will be able to solve some awesome problems in the future, but it is just a little bit early on those. And so I have some investment in that, but I'm not willing to risk too much more at this moment. The last three in this crypto portfolio are XRP, VeChain, and also band protocol, each of them at 2%. Now I should have made another little category of other, because I do have exposure to about five or six other cryptocurrencies, but they're all super, super small compared to all the rest of these. And I talk about all of these and more in my top 10 crypto video. Moving right along is my brokerage account, which has a mixture of ETFs and individual stocks. So of my total brokerage account investment, 35% of it is in ETF. And those two ETFs are just like before, VU, the S&P 500, and QQQ. So I have those in my retirement account for long-term growth because they've proven that long-term they will continue to grow. But I also have them in my short-term portfolio because those are just good foundational investments that help stabilize the portfolio. And I'm someone who invests in few companies but understands them deeply rather than investing in like a hundred different companies and understanding them somewhat. So the first individual company stock that I have is Berkshire Hathaway. That makes up 15% of my portfolio. This is Warren Buffett's company and out of anyone in the stock investing world, he's taught me the most and I believe that my investing strategy aligns the most with his thesis, which is so simple. And he says that nobody does it because nobody wants to get rich slow. In other words, everyone's looking for that quick buck. And unfortunately, spoiler alert, that usually doesn't end well. The next individual company stock in my portfolio is Apple at 15%. Do I really need to explain why I have Apple there? This is one of the best and well-run companies that the United States has ever had. And what I like about them is how innovative they are. They spend so much money on research and development and they keep pushing to be number one rather than just being complacent. The next stock at 15% is Disney. Now, Disney is just kind of going through some things right now. They're trying to figure out what type of company they actually want to be. They've really made a push for digital and streaming, which I think is very smart because they're going to reach much more customers that way. They also have a lock on the amusement park category and just media in general with all the different TV companies and movie companies that they own as well. All in all, they have very sticky customers that are gonna stick with them no matter what and who love to rep the brand. And as far as investing goes, you want a company with such competitive advantage like that. My next stock is Microsoft with 10%. And now this is a new position for me. And like I said earlier, I don't invest in many different companies. So if a new company gets put into the investment portfolio, there's a reason. So I've been watching Microsoft for quite some time, obviously one of the biggest and best companies in the United States, but I thought I had enough exposure to the technology sector with Apple. But Microsoft is a little bit different and I talk a lot about that in a video that I made on why I put this into my portfolio. So I'll link to that below and it's also here. The last individual company in my brokerage account is a high risk, but I believe high reward company, and that is Alibaba out of China. Three or four years ago, I did a bunch of research on Jack Ma, who's a brilliant founder and one of the smartest minds in China, one of the best businessmen that I've encountered. And he built this company to be very similar to Amazon, like we have in the United States. One of the big reasons why I think this thing could soar is their cloud computing, which when Amazon started that, that's when they turned into the Amazon that we know 
rather than just the company that was selling books online. The problem with Alibaba is that it is in China and their government is just different. If they want to, they can literally shut down a company. It's very hard to do that in the United States. So again, this is high risk, but that's why it's only 10% of my brokerage account, which in the grand scheme of all of my investments is very low, but I think it can grow to something big. And the last piece that makes up this investment portfolio is my cash. As you can see, it's under 5%, but I do keep it there just in case something happens. If one of these companies or even cryptocurrencies drops to a level that I think is just super high value, then I'll use that cash to buy it. It's also just safe to have a little bit of cash. The reason why it's under 5% is because the crazy inflation that we're going through right now is just not the greatest move to hold anything in cash because you're losing that purchasing power. The only reason that you want to have cash is if you need it. If, you, if I needed to pay for something in the next month or two or three, then it's smart to have cash on hand. But since I set everything up the way that I teach you guys and I have my budget sound and I have a solid emergency fund, then I can do what I need to do to make it so that these investments grow like crazy. So that's my investment portfolio. Let me know what you guys think and what companies you guys are investing in. And that's all for now. Professor G, out.